I'll quickly introduce uh, Stride as like an organization. Uh, hi, I'm Dan Cardinal McCartney. No, Seth and I and Glenna are not related, but I think it's cool. We have a similar last name. Um, I'm the uh, co-artistic director with Eva Berhanu, who's also here. And we have RM Kim, who is the executive director and we're a not-for-profit art gallery in downtown Wilkinsis. Um, and I'll also quickly introduce uh, Seth and Glenna. Uh, for this exhibition for their artist talk tonight. Uh, so Tina Ganai is Deer Road is an artist collective from Kazusi, Mokinsis, Calgary, consisting of parent-child duo Glenna Cardinal, Sutina Satellite Cree, and Seth Cardinal Dodging Horse, Sutina Pigane Satellite Cree. In 2014, they were forcibly removed from their homes and ancestral land on the Sutina Nation for construction of the Southwest Calgary Ring Road. Uh, their multidisciplinary practice honors their connection to the land and explores the effects of environmental psychological damage. Tenak and I work is deeply based in culture, language, oral history, family photographs, and museum archival research. Uh, their art is an act of cultural preservation and a protest against ongoing settler colonialism. Uh, so I'll hand it off to uh, Seth and Glenna. I don't believe I'm missing anything, but let me know if I am. So take it away. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you, Dan, for that. That was a lot of words. You did great, though. <laughs> um, I'm Seth, and I can let my mom say a little bit about herself if she wants. Um. <clears throat> No, I don't need to say anything. <laughs> I don't, say. I don't, I don't know what more I could say other than um, I'm just a mom to two two artists, musicians, and and I'm pretty proud of my kids and and um, I see my friends are here, so I feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to do the land acknowledgement, sir? Oh yeah, I would like to acknowledge that we are on my land. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> let's get this show on the road. Um, share screen. All right, cool. Can everyone see this image? Let me yes. know. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so um, just like a little bit of a backstory. Um, so this is an image from the 1880s of um, Chief Bullhead, who was the chief of the Tsutuna Nation. Um, the Tsutuna Nation is where myself and my mother both grew up. And Bullhead in our culture, like he's uh, going back seven generations for myself. Um, my grandfather at the time, this was his younger brother. And Bullhead was the head chief of Tsutuna. He's like the most badass dude I know of. Um, people, like when people see an image of him because he's missing one of his eyes, you know, they, uh, some people have some like wild stories and theories about how he lost his eye, but um, he lost his eye due to tuberculosis. So uh, he didn't lose it from battle or anything. He was incredibly tough, but also a very loving man and um, his work, that he did during his life and protecting the land and fighting for his people. And basically like us Sutina people, I, you know, in my opinion, and also talking to some elders, we wouldn't be here without all of the work that he did to protect us and protect the land. So um, that's Bullhead. And uh, I think the way me and my mom carry ourselves is a lot. In, uh, thinking about like our family and Bullhead is our relative and thinking about um, all of all of the amazing badass stuff he did. Let's see if I could move to the next slide. Okay. Uh, so oh. this next image is, oh, can you see it? Yeah, I was just gonna tell you too, like Bullhead oh, yeah. was six foot five. Yeah, he was a He was, he was really huge tall. Dude. And then this is uh, Bullhead's brother, who is uh, myself and my mother's grandparent going back. And this is also our grandmother going back. They were a married couple 
they look pretty pretty rough in this photo but you know they were going through a lot they survived uh you know tuberculosis a uh, smallpox epidemic and then uh i think two waves of the smallpox um epidemic in the community which wiped out uh i think the numbers according like me and my mom do a lot of research and i think by the early 1900s and 1910s there was only 154 the the numbers kind of vary but it's kind of like around 160 sutina nation members at the time so we almost went extinct so you know these these people were were really tough and badass for surviving everything um so this is uh, a work that my mom did recently um we won't focus on it too much but um the images on these cards are of uh my great great grandma who's the older woman in both of these images and the baby in the photo is my great grandma and their names were um the baby is elsie jacobs and the mother in the image is winnie bull crowchild and these are photos that i grew up uh, being inside our home and uh you know like her the these women their presence were felt in our home and my grandma often told stories about them growing up to me which i appreciate and i don't know if you want to briefly talk about um why you put these images on the library card this month well it was very important for me um to have these images um on these cards because the land that the ring road uh took um that was their land that was their home that was the land that they um they cleared the land that they grew their gardens on it was the land that um you know if if we're we wouldn't be here if it weren't for them because they they raised their families there and um you know we wouldn't be here and the generations after us wouldn't be here so they're very important um to me and they're very important to survival of uh what we went through so i, I honored them um by putting this image and and um you know it has a lot to say to who we are today even seth and i and and knowing this history of indigenous women and seeing the strength in them in these images is really um you know it lifts me in everything i do in life as i walk through this life thanks seth <laughs> thank you that's very beautiful so this is a google earth image of the reserve, so the squared off in the red um, land is the Tsutina Nation Reserve. And you can see Calgary is right there. And I don't know if you can zoom in. Oh, yeah, you can zoom in. So if you look over where it says two guns on the right side, that's where the ring road is now. So um, parts of Calgary now cut through the reserve. And um, as as time goes on it, it is a worry in the community that you know settler colonialism you know people they've already taken so much from the land that they're just going to continue to take more and more so that uh that's something we keep in mind um this is a image of the land that uh you know my family grew up on for generations on the reserve and this is a photo that my mom took of me um that's me standing there and this is a we're heading to the garden and it's the same garden that my mom was mentioning that uh you know our grandmothers worked on and so i i grew up gardening in that same garden i feel very blessed to have been able to you know live on the land in that way and grow up like that uh this is like a little gif that i made in 2020 i've been meaning to do an updated version but this kind of just shows like different areas of the land that have stories and stuff. My home, uh, where we had a sweat lodge, where there was a log house, a horse corral, we had a horse graveyard. And then as time changes, you can see how 
um, from our removal, then in comes the road and how it, it affected the land and also uh, destroyed a, lo a lot of these places. And if, if you watch the GIF, if you look at where it says one, two, three, you, you can see other homes. Uh, those, those homes that pop up uh, later in the GIF actually aren't our homes because they removed us. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, they put other people on the portions of the land that were destroyed. So here's uh, another image. So, you know, trigger warning, land loss, genocide, all of that. Like, this, you know, this is the stuff we talk about in our work. And this is an uh, image of it during construction. So, uh, you know, this, the physical impact that we witnessed, uh, both from being removed from the land and also witnessing the land be changed is what uh, really um, led to the work that we created in this show. So I, this is a image of me also like mom if you want to I, I don't want to hog all the space so if you want to jump in and talk at any point feel free um this is a image of me I feel really weird talking about this all the time but in 2020 I think October 1st the day the ring road opened I showed up and I protested it and I gave a speech and the majority of the words that I gave in that speech were actually uh from a letter that my mom wrote that morning. And so it's, you know, it's mostly my mom's words. Uh, it's not mine. I, I don't take credit for all of that. And when I showed up there, I ended up cutting off my braids. And I'm, you know, I'm still processing this event because it was very intense and I didn't expect it to get so much press coverage. And, uh, you know, this in terms of like myself and the art that I make and everything. Uh, this was a very strange moment for me because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty shy. And so to do something like this and then have a bunch of people uh, know about it is very strange, but I, I, I still stand by what I did and the the message was just about, you know, that's, you know, this is the history of the land and also like, you know, in, indigenous people are gonna, we're gonna outlive all of the highways and malls and, you know, pipelines and things that are being built and stuff. And so we should just stop making those now. Uh, this is another image from that day. That's the chief of Tsutin is standing there and this is right after I cut my hair and we're kind of having a, a face off because I, uh, you know, he was saying things about uh, politics within the nation and stuff and, uh, you know, essentially saying that he wouldn't speak to me because I'm, you know, it's, it's a long story, but essentially because of uh, sexism and misogyny and things like the Indian Act, uh, myself and other relatives aren't nation members even though we grew up inheriting the land that, uh, you know, we've lived on for generations. So, you know, this will kind of show up later in the work. Uh, this, this was a, we're gonna kind of show you just like a bit of work that um, we've done in the past recent years. Like we started, myself and my mom started collaborating in 2019 and this was uh, a digital work that we had to make that ended up becoming vinyl stickers that were put on a gallery window because in the second year of the pandemic, galleries were still closed. So we had to find a way to work around, uh, work with technology and stuff. And I, you know, uh, myself and my mom are both like, we struggle with computers. So this was a lot to figure out, but, uh, I think it was your idea to do the QR codes. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? No. No? Okay. <laughs> we'll the we'll QR move on codes. then. No, you did the QR codes. I just agreed with it. It was a lot putting it digital. It was harder than doing an actual exhibition. Yeah. And I so love like, the photograph. This is a photo that my little brother took of me. And this is supposed to actually show up later in the slideshow. 
but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. So my little brother and me revisited the land where the construction was going on. And this photo was taken in 2019. And what I love about this photo is uh, I just wanted to show, show what was going on with the land and, uh, you know, kind of talk about, you know, my experiences growing up there and all of this. And so this image became a postcard and a physical postcard. And on the back of the postcard, there's text that's talking about what it feels like to return to the land and the trees you grew up to, and then there's none. And while my brother was taking this photograph of me, there's a res dog that showed up and there was some construction poles there, uh, some survey markers and the res dog just started destroying and pulling out these survey markers. <laughs> so I think the res dog was also like, you know, like screw this. So the, you know, the res dogs, they, they also feel for the land. Um, this is a photograph that I took of my mom and my grandma overlooking that same spot where I was sitting. And uh, at this point in time, the road was complete. And this is after the opening of the road happened. And these are beautiful shawls that my mom made. Do you want to talk about those shawls? Sure. Um, the shawl on the right with all the, with all the different lines, it, it goes back to um, our great grandmothers, and those are the years that they were born. Um, I'm pretty sure that one says 1841. Um, and then the next one is, says um, 1866. And it goes all the way down to, to uh, through the generations, um, like it started with like woman holding woman, and then it goes all the way down to um the year my mom 1944 and then and then the year of my birth was 1966 um and it just it just shows for me it was um telling um the generations of Sutana women that I come from and the family because Seth is included on this shawl as well and and my nieces and, and my great nieces are also, um, their birthdays are on the shawls too. Um, the shawl was at, uh, I think it was at Salt Spring. And that was one oh, of the- The one on the right. Yeah, the one on the right was highlighted at Salt Spring. And then, yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> did not mean <laughs> to cut you off. Um, yeah, are you, are you done talking about that or did you have any? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just, okay. I'll glitch for a little while. <laughs> okay, what is your computer glitching? <laughs> okay, uh, so this is, a, this image is from the 1920s and I've been doing a lot of research and spending time with elders and, you know, I was thinking about how people paint, uh, do like war paintings on hides or they do winter counts to like mark the things that happened during that year. And so seeing the way our history and knowledge was being preserved uh, through like iconography. And uh, I, I heard someone talk recently about an important point where someone at a panel who uh, was white, uh, it was at an indigenous filmmakers panel was like, you know, kind of like asking questions and was like, oh, but you guys never had any written language. And then this, older needs it to be blackfoot man uh you know he stood up and he was like oh we had we had written language uh we but you know our written language also includes oral history so uh you know our paintings on our hides and on our uh, our ceremonial objects on our beadwork all of those things that's that's our language that's written and uh you know i thought that was beautiful and i was like you know, but I, I loved hearing that. So I think thinking about that and thinking about how, uh, you know, just making stuff and making things to preserve and tell stories is, you know, it's, it's all that stuff is there. And so uh, this is some documentation photos that were taken of the show. Um, very grateful to Stride for getting, uh, I feel bad I'm blanking out on their name, but, um, 
I'm gonna find it at the end so I can give them a shout out and give credit, but for getting these documentation photos. Uh, I don't know who the person is standing there, but this is the outside of the show we have going on. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. Uh, shout out to my friend, Jonathan, who helped build the stand that's holding up the end construction sign. Also shout out to my friend, Christina, for getting uh, some of the materials that are in the show as well. So that's an actual end construction sign that was at the side of the ring road. Um, while it was being constructed. So this was something uh, people on the nation saw every day while the road was being built. Um, so when you walk in the gallery, there's this table and it has uh, some view masters and, uh, or it has a view master and some reels that you can look through. Uh, I'm really obsessed with like older toys and nostalgia and also playing with the idea of like, uh, uh, like play, playing around with like how people feel when they see those older objects. Like uh, I think um, like I, I've shown some of my relatives who didn't grow up playing with those toys and they, they know how to play with them automatically and they enjoy them. And it's kind of like how, how things like those are. Uh, yeah, you've, everyone loves old technology. <laughs> There's something just like very beautiful about it. And so uh, this is a, uh, little replica of the house that I grew up in and that my mom grew up in uh, on the land. And this table is supposed to be like an interactive archive. Uh, so there's an image of the actual house. And then this is like another view of the show where you can see in the background is my mom's piece, uh, which we'll get to soon and I'll let her talk about that. And then we have on the left side, painted on the wall, like everyone at Stride, like thank you so much because they hand painted all of the text. It's very beautiful and we really appreciate all of the work that they put in. And do you want to talk about uh, the poem that you wrote, New Agency? Um, I guess I was, um, we did an audio piece with it that we recorded and, and I'm, I'm sure Jocelyn is just wondering about the poem I wrote. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you call it a poem or whatever it is, but it's just one of the things that I did for wellness was um, to write down what I was feeling. And sometimes um, you don't have that opportunity to speak about it and share with people and um, and I sat down and I wrote, and this is what came out because of a lot of it is is like um, like agency. And when we think of agency, and what I've learned from it is that um, that's the first thing that colonialism and patriarchy has taken from us as Indigenous people, Indigenous women, as they take away our agency to speak for ourselves, to do things for ourselves, and, and to make those important decisions. And um, that was the first thing they took away from our Indigenous people that went to schools, to residential schools, they took away their agency. And I just wanted to uh, when I wrote it, I just wanted to speak about it also, and just to, um, um, like Seth, uh, put new agency, you know, so, so he, he shared, like, we're collaborating together, and he's just like, mom, this is how agency should look today, you know, power redefined, no longer colonial, no longer patriarchal, and, um, one of the huge things that I felt in all of our, um, what happened to us with the ring road is that we were being made invisible, you know? And, and I, didn't, I didn't like being made invisible um, and, and regaining this, um, you know, this power within myself and finding that agency to speak out. 
So yeah, so it, it's we have the audio too as well. Does the audio come on when you you click on that icon? Uh, not on the icon, but if you scan the QR code, the oh, I mean the QR code. Yeah, the text piece pops up and people oh, can okay. people can print it and take it. With oh, them. okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks, Seth. That's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> That is very good. Good job. Uh, this is an image of your uh, water bottle piece. I think it's really cool. Do you, you should talk about it because I I remember you were trying to figure out how to install this piece, and usually you use rocks to hold the steer head up, and uh, it was too cold outside, and the rocks you were going to use were all frozen. And then I remember you're like, "I'm going to sew water bottles together," and uh, I, I was like, okay. And then <laughs> I, I saw you pull out all these water bottles. And I was like, oh my God, you actually sewed them all together. <laughs> I know Dan was, Dan, did you want to say anything about the water bottles? <laughs> For a bit? Yeah, you were just like, whoa, I didn't know you were going to actually do it <laughs> uh, you mentioned about doing it and i feel like you just can't you just came with the, these large bags <laughs> and i was like i can hear the crinkling and it's really cool because you uh you saw them with sinu so as soon as you get close you can see them all throughout the piece i think it's really powerful it shows a lot um like seth's done work like you did the the yoko ono water project and then and then I was like, um, you know, water bottles are our everyday life in our home right now. And, and yeah. not having that clean fun, water. Fun fact, drink. the the homes we live on on the reserve, like we drink from bottled water. So these are the actual bottles of water that uh, like my mom and family over in their house drank and like consumed and then you know, like, I, I think, you know, it, it comes from lived experience. Yeah. So yeah, Seth collected these, um, these ties, and they were tied on trees um, in the ring road construction, and they were laying on the trees that were cut down. They actually, um, they actually you cut the trees down that these ties are on and it's um it just shows a lot of what was said and done um yeah it was very uh, harmful to the environment and everything yeah and also just how they say environmentally sensitive area but like completely showed a lack of care for the environment uh here's another view of the work did you did you want to talk about the blanket that's hanging up? So the blanket is um the blanket was gifted to me like as all the other pieces of I have other pieces of this blanket and this just was a centennial blanket that Sutana Nation had and they gave to their members and this depicts the scene of bullhead coming to the land where we are now, where the reserve is, and they sent out a runner uh, and, well, different runners to different areas on the reserve, and they went and um, placed, um, is it a foundation, foundational pieces to mark the land, and that was how Sutuna got their land, and, and that's how they were given that land in um, and they came to the reserve out there. Uh, for me, this piece is important. With this blanket, it shows that when they made the ring road, they um, changed the direction of how the river flowed um, to make it more aesthetically pleasing. So there was really no environmental reason that they needed to change the way the river flowed. And um, so I kind of depicted that piece when I took that piece of the river out and, and displaced it in the blanket and put it on the footstool. 
uh, very interesting how this exhibition had the buck looking at the blanket too as well because the mask on the buck is is protecting him and it's protecting uh the buck and and kind of like also he has to see what's happening and um yeah it's a very emotional piece and uh sometime in the future you know um i hope you get to hear the story of the buck yeah uh, oh that's cool this, that's your this. that's our treaty money right there <laughs> that's five dollars <laughs> yeah so for the treaty we're registered in which is treaty six uh we grew up on sutan and treaty seven but um you know the treaty money we get every month from the government is every year five, or yeah not every month i wish i mean every month wouldn't <laughs> even be that great we only get five dollars so uh, you, you can't even afford to get like a bag of chips and pops anymore before that was the thing everyone would get their treaty money and like literally just get a couple snacks from like 7-eleven or something but uh, due to inflation also the five dollars never increases with inflation so yeah it's uh it's not worth it to go drive to pick up your treaty money anymore because um, of also the cost of gas uh so this is a, a new work that I made um it was it kind of took a lot of convincing to get my mom to have this in the show because I was like I want to I want to print on toilet paper and I want to put toilet paper on the walls and uh yeah we, we had quite a few funny conversations because you know she was like why do you want to put toilet paper on the wall like are you sure and um yeah so the toilet paper i'll try and zoom in but the toilet paper shows the companies that built the ring road and the construction construction companies and businesses that invested in it so over here is the alberta's recovery plan logo which the ring road is part of the construction is part of alberta's recovery plan um there's the lead core group there's kgl which is the construction company, there's Canberrell, which is another company, and there's the Taza logo. Uh, so, um, you know, I thought about having the Taza logo. So Taza in Sutina is kind of like a, an exclamation, like, wow, or like, you know, when something wonderful or, or amazing happens, it's, that's what you say. And now uh, there's an indigenous uh, at Sutina company called Taza. And that's the logo and their whole thing is about, um, you know, in, it doesn't make any sense. It's about uh, indigenous recon uh, economic reconciliation, which doesn't make sense to me. It's literally just about like, uh, you know, branding something indigenous and saying you're doing it in an indigenous way and you have an indigenous name, you hire indigenous people, but it's literally just uh, ongoing um colonialism but just with brown people doing it so that's that, that's what i was thinking about while making this and uh there's another indigenous artist that has done work with toilet paper uh i think her name is adi murray and she did a really cool piece where she sewed some beads onto uh the strip of toilet paper um or the end of the toilet paper she sewed and it looks like the Hudson's Bay Company colors. Uh, just want to give a shout out to that. Like, I think their work is amazing. Um, I, I wasn't thinking of that while I made it, but yeah, there's someone else who, they did toilet paper before me, so credit goes to them. This is a beaver hide that I silk screened another one of the company's logos onto. It says the big four. Uh, all of the all of the work that we do there's like actually like we could sit and talk for hours about why we made the decisions to do what we did but i'll kind of like move on ahead but basically like all of these companies are evil and they don't care about the land well, uh, well wait seth go back to it i think that okay. all this speaks to um it takes 
these companies, it takes more people than just the band. It takes it takes a lot of people to make your family displaced. Yeah. All these people had a responsibility to know who lived there. Who are they? Are they taken care of? Are they okay? And all these people didn't care to even yeah. wonder where these families are going. Um, we could put federal, provincial government, um, municipal. All these people are the people that should care what happens um, and should be accountable to having displaced people there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Um, so the first toilet paper that I made, um, actually, fun fact is, I was trying to figure out how to print on toilet paper and I was doing a residency at the Banff Center. But I was like, I, I don't have enough time to silk screen on each individual paper. So I was like, who am I going to outsource this to? So I did some research and then I found a person on Etsy who lives in Montana and she prints on toilet paper. And she actually printed toilet paper for some SNL skits, some Saturday Night Live skits. So once I saw on her Etsy that like, and I watched those skits and I was like, you know, this is the person that I need to print on this toilet paper for me. And I, I, uh, I, I asked her, I said, uh, I have this, this uh, letter, can you print this on toilet paper and make it so it's readable? Uh, and she was like, yes. So I was like, awesome. So I got her to print these. And essentially, this is a letter that was publicly released by the nation. And uh, like, it, you know, it's essentially condemning everything that I said about the ring road, and, you know, like. Uh, I think it, it says... hugely, <laughs> son, oh, yeah. it hugely says the loss of kinship. Yeah. When your own family does this, kinship is lost. We've lost our ways as Indigenous people. We don't honor adopted. We don't honor our family. And, and colonialism and patriarchy right here won. And kinship um, is damaged by economic development right here. Yeah, so this is actually a quote written by my adopted brother, Brent Dodging Horse. Uh, it's all just like, yeah, there's it's also back. Good. There's, Let's move there's, on. Yeah, there's a backstory here, but essentially, uh, yeah, I was, was like, you know, I was thinking for years because for it's 20, 2021, I was thinking for like almost two years. I was like, what am I going to do with this? And then finally, I was like, I'm going to print it on toilet paper. and. Uh, during the opening, the same toilet paper was in the bathroom. So this is what everyone was like wiping themselves with when they used the bathroom. I thought that was pretty funny. That's like the res doubt sense of humor in me. So this is the actual statement, but I'll move on because we're kind of running out of time. So uh, this is another view of another work in the show um, that I'm really proud of. And basically I printed, I was thinking about like our history of making war paintings and winter counts and preserving a story and also honoring people. So I painted this to honor my mom and to honor like, you know, a woman. And I painted this using natural pigments and, you know, just to like very quickly tell this story of why I painted this was uh, I, I had this elk hide and that's the elk hide you see here. And for probably six months, I had a show planned. And for six months I, leading up to the show, I kept putting it off to paint it because I was like, it has to be good. I have to paint a good story. I can't rush this, I can't force this. And then in the last week before I had to fly for the show and install this piece, I hadn't done anything. And I kept praying every night, you know, I was like being very like sacred and smudging and praying. And I was like, you know, please give me a good dream because uh, dreams are important in my culture. 
was like, give me a good dream. I, I got to paint something good. Like, you know, I got a week. And every night I kept praying and I didn't have any dreams. And then the night before I traveled, I, I prayed extra hard and I was like, please give me a dream. <laughs> like, I, I, I got to do this. And then I, I woke up at 5 a.m. because I thought I heard something bump the window. And when I woke up, I was like, oh, no, like, I didn't have any dreams. This, this sucks. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? I got to install this in like two days now. And I got I to gotta fly and leave in a couple hours. And so I, I went upstairs. My bedroom's in the basement. I went upstairs and I looked out my kitchen window. And when I looked out, I saw a buck standing there, a deer. And uh, I guess it bumped the window and woke me up. And when I saw that deer, I, I remembered a story my mom told me. Uh, it, in this story, it's when my mom is driving into the city on the reserve, uh, right, you know, pretty soon after we were displaced. And it was the first day they knocked all the trees down for the ring road and all of the trees where we lived. And when they knocked all the trees down, she saw a deer standing there. Uh, and her and that deer were both witnessing and experiencing their home uh, completely devastated and destroyed. And, uh, you know, my mom survived that and has that story. And so I wanted to honor her for surviving that. And so, I, you know, also just like as Indigenous people, we, you know, we engage a lot with our trauma. <laughs> And we joke about it, we laugh about it. And, you know, so with this, I was like, you know, even though it's a sad story and everything, I want to honor you and show how you survived, you know, so that deer standing there is my mom. And I wanted to honor how she survived all of this ongoing devastation and shock. So that's what that piece is. It shows the construction workers being evil and affecting the land and yeah uh talk about a couple more things and then i think we're done i don't know if we're going to do any questions this is another view of the show um this is a little corner where we have where there's a video playing where you could sit uh there's family photos photo of my grandma my uncles and my aunts and all of them all of the photos are on the land there's the images of me at our garden, walking over to it. Uh, and then beside it, we have these two drawings. And the drawing on the right is one that I drew as a kid. And I didn't find it until very recently. So it's very special because it shows our home. It shows me and my mom standing there. I think I drew this in grade one or two. It shows the trees. <laughs> It shows the horses because, you know, like it's just wild that people are driving on this land and it's there's nothing out there because when I grew up there, like all of the animals you could ever think of that are in this area, I saw them and I grew up with them. So it's wild finding this drawing. Uh, so I was like, this has to be in the show. And then I found this other drawing uh, and it's of the house as well. And my grandma actually drew this and you can see my cat from when I was a kid and uh very canadian um uh me and my grandma were sitting inside the zellers restaurant rest in peace and uh, i asked my grandma i was like hey can you draw our house and she was like okay i must have been six years old she drew it and then i kept it all these years and i found these two drawings and i was like wow like you know uh it's very beautiful to have my drawing and my grandma's drawing of the same place uh, okay, I think last thing we'll talk about, and then we'll be done uh, talking for now, is you should talk about your chairs. Yeah. Um, so, what does the yellow chair say? I am the beauty of home. Um, for me, yellow is the color of healing. Uh, the land I grew up on was the beauty of home. As I heal, I'm looking for the beauty of home and making pieces of furniture, um, pieces that will go in a home, reusing 
you know, recycling pieces um, and using the Pendleton blankets because a lot of times people just um, get them as gifts, as honorings. And then uh, I just wanted to use the Pendleton blankets as well. And I was exploring using the cloth. Um, the orange chair, I am not reconciliation is um, challenging people to think beyond the color orange, um, the orange t-shirt, to do the work in understanding residential school and understanding uh, intergenerational trauma. Um, a woman once said that um, going to my artist talk was reconciliation to her. Um, so for me, I felt like it was her saying, I don't have to do the work. Um, and the other part of reconciliation is that I never did anything wrong, you know, and I don't feel I have to do the work for reconciliation. I don't have to speak about it because it's other people to learn. Um, in my mind, when I saw these two chairs together, I just felt that it, um, um, I just imagined that these two chairs are side by side and they're having um, a conversation and looking at all the people coming in the gallery. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we put them in a spot too so people could sit down and look at the high painting. And, yeah, um, I was hoping people yeah. would like sit in them and use them. I just wanted them to sit in a comfy chair too. <laughs> yeah, they're very beautiful. Mm, um, thank you. Yeah. I think, Should we uh, let people ask us questions? Sure. Uh, let me thank you, Seth. Sharing. Okay. Pass it over to you, Dan. Yes, thank you. Thank you both of you for sharing that for the past 40, 40 ish minutes. Thank you to both of you. Um, for this part, it'll be till about six. So I'll stop talking in like a second. And if anyone has a question for both of them or individual, please go ahead and ask. And yeah. I'll start it off just with a quick question. Could you quickly touch on uh, the beautiful colors in the gallery that we had so much fun painting? And I don't mean that sarcastically. I actually love painting them. It was really, really great. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the work that I started doing while I went to art school, um, a lot of my earlier work, and then I kind of stopped for a bit, and then now I'm kind of revisiting it again. But the homes that I grew up in on that land, uh, the walls inside the home I grew up in, they were all pastel colors. So there was pinks and mint greens and uh, some like very dreamy yellows. So uh, I was talking with my mom and we were both like, you know, let's have the walls in the galleries be this color because uh, yeah, that's, that's home to us. So the, yeah, I, it was kind of funny because I like did a lot of work like that with these colors and uh, with the art that I make. And even from very early on, I'd all, I always, uh, it's hard for me to do something and for it to not have any meaning. And so I'd be making work like this and stuff. And uh, I don't know, I just have always people be like, oh, it's so aesthetic. Like, you know, that work is so aesthetic and stuff. But like, in a way where I'm like, no, it's, it's not necessarily about it being like a, a certain visual aesthetic and stuff. It's like actually referencing things uh, in my memory and childhood, you know, all that the stuff. The res like, house, the inside <laughs> walls of a res house. Yeah, the, the res houses, I mean, they look pretty ugly on the outside, but on the inside, they're like grown up, they're very colorful, very colorful, very messy and uh, very cozy. Yeah. Thank you.
I don't know who else has a question. Well, Christina. Um, 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 sorry, I've got two things going here. Um, let me just turn the sound off. Sorry. No, what's going on? Okay. I'm traveling. Um, let me just turn that off. There we go. No, nope. nope. there we go. <laughs> Technical troubles. <laughs> Apologies. Um, can you tell both tell us a little bit about how you decided what to include in the stride show? You have so much different work. How did that process work for you working together to figure out how to combine the pieces to tell the story for, for the stride show? It was, it was hard. hard. Seth wanted to fill every wall. <laughs> I I hadn't done a show in person for so long. I mean, for so long for me, just because like the pandemic happened and then like life and everything. And so I was exploding with ideas and I had to, everyone had to rein me in, which I'm very grateful. I, you know, I was like this thing, this thing. Um, so yeah it it was actually very tricky for me to like think of uh what to take out what to put in um i just felt like uh i was out of practice for quite a bit of time and the way i work is i i really love engaging with the space and making things uh either making things specifically for that space or changing things around so it's uh responding and existing in that space and so, uh, yeah, I, I really had to work my brain again and work that part of my brain. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And yeah, it was really nice. I'm just like very grateful and glad that uh, everyone at like Stride and like all of our friends and everything have been able to like, yeah, either like come out to the opening or just like have conversations and stuff. So yeah. I'm like, not trying to be cheesy, but I'm just very grateful. <laughs> how about you, Glenna? What was unexpected for you about the combination of how things came together for Stride or, or a nice surprise or? Oh, sorry, Glenna, you have your uh, microphone off. Uh, okay. So I think the cool piece was, um, I don't know, I, I don't know. I think it was like having to, the, the toilet paper threw me off <laughs> only because um, Seth pushes me to those limits, like the humor and, and addressing those issues. Um, I have to let go of my colonial way of thinking and I have to allow us to speak about those things. Um, and I am um, constantly challenged by Seth to, um, to look at things uh, in a different way, you know, and, and I'm very grateful that he does that and um, yeah, I think it's really important that that we work together because we've experienced these things together, but we really push each other in different ways to to get you know what we say because we can't carry it all the time. <laughs> I was just wondering if, if you guys could talk about um, uh, and maybe I missed a little bit at the start because I was a little I mixed up the time zones, but. Um, how, how, what is, you know, collaboration when you guys are also loving relatives and uh, family and like, how do you, how do you set good boundaries or how do you return to each other when you have interesting or difficult conversations? Um, I was just kind of inspired when you were talking about, yeah. but I was just like wondering like, how do you, like, how do you set good, uh, healthy boundaries or return to each other in collaboration? Like, like uh, when you guys were just talking about the toilet paper, 
project and 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 Glenna saying like at the start kind of having to be a bit convinced by you and then uh, maybe you had some really good convincing reasons uh, to go forward with the toilet paper but um, you know having a relationship or your family already like how how do you guys balance that and um, just curious yeah wait can I tell her my trick oh yeah yeah my trick is um, I'm not going to answer right away as a parent. I can't make the, that decision. And then I say, um, can you talk to me tomorrow? Mm. You know, that's all I have to say to him is like, do not talk to me now because I'm going to say no. So you talk to me tomorrow. <laughs> Go ahead, that's such sir. good advice. Yeah, I. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, <clears throat> I have a, like creating visual art, I'm very, uh, I, I have a vision and I have a hard time. That's why I don't collaborate with uh, too many people when I'm like making like art art because I, yeah, I just, I, I get, and I'm trying to work on it. I'm trying to be like less like trolling, more open to collaboration and all of that. But I think it, I think it's just because the work that I make is very specific to my experience and story. So it's, that's why I have a hard time collaborating with others because uh, the things that I want to say are just very specific. And so uh, when me and my mom started working together, it was because uh, she wanted to make work and I was getting burnt out on making this type of work on my own. And so we started working together uh, to support one another and because we were like hey like we literally have the same lived experience let's just help each other out and we yeah it, it's really nice working with her because um, growing up me and my mom me and my mom are the ones in the family where we're the most intense with each other we've had the most intense arguments and everything and we love each other very much but like mm -hmm. Uh, me being older and like all of that like it's uh working on art together has also just like helped our our relationship it's also really nice because I'm I'm like a slow turtle sometimes mm -hmm. uh so I, I'm like you know I I can have an idea and I will sit on it for like six months you know I'm like I just need the right moment and then my mom's like like we're doing this right now and so she pushes me in that way, which is really nice. And we, uh, yeah, I think the most that we clash over is I'm just like, I'm like, I want this thing to be pink. And then she's like, it's not <laughs> going to be pink. It's going to be red. And then I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, get frustrated. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> like, so we, yeah, or I'll, she'll be doing something and I'm like, that looks ugly, like that looks terrible. So the nice thing is we can be very blunt with one another, yeah. um, which is, is good. Cause then, you know, instead of like having our feelings hurt over things like that, you know, we were just like, we're like, yeah, well, you know what? You think it's ugly. I'm going to make it better instead <laughs> of being like, yeah, I don't know. We, we haven't had anything too intense happen. So I think, uh, I think art is like where we find balance in a lot of ways so yeah yeah I, I think it, yeah oh sorry what were you saying oh oh sorry I was just gonna say it's nice that you reference um these color choices as like a, li a little place to find um uh, like ways to make compromise but the colors work so well in the in the gallery from having these bright vibrant oranges and then the mix of pastels it, it that merging of your two color palettes really goes well in the exhibition yeah Thank you. Yeah, I, I like I when I'm making art. I think the thing that I really enjoy about myself is, uh, I mean, as a as a person, there are times where I can be very like shy or I want to be invisible. But with the art that I'm making, I really I'm like you know, no one else is going to tell this story, so I need to tell it. So, uh, so it's like with doing the toilet paper I was like I gotta put this statement out that these people wrote about me that my relatives wrote about me I gotta put it on toilet paper <laughs> like I gotta and then I was talking to my mom and my mom was like you know maybe save that for later or like don't do it for this show 
uh, or, you know, talk to me tomorrow. So then the next day we talked and then uh, I, I talked about it more. And then we just laughed because we were like, actually, this is hilarious having this on toilet paper. We just laughed and then we we're like, it's okay. <laughs> so then, and, and yeah. Did you know right from the start that you, you guys are going to put it in the actual bathroom? Uh, yeah, I, I think. I think that was actually the thing that took more convincing for it because I was like, I really want people to use this toilet paper. <laughs> and, I, you know, and if someone needs the bathroom at the gallery, they have to use this toilet paper. There's no other option. It's just this toilet paper. And so funny. yeah. And I, I think I, we really, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. we really needed the humor. The humor in all of this is very important. and um yeah i serious topic sometimes and i i lose that humor and thank you for thank you for it seth yeah no you're you're welcome any if anyone else needs any help making toilet paper art <laughs> uh you can hit me up and i can guide you guide you through it <laughs> thank you thank you nicole everyone <laughs>